Thank you. I'm going to go to the front row here. The gentleman in the red tie, please. Yes, thank you for taking my question. My name is Simon Ateba with Today News Africa in Washington, D.C. Um, exactly to the point that you just made, the fact that we have hundreds of billions of dollars available for investment, but that money doesn't seem to flow to low-income countries, especially in Africa. I would like to talk a little bit more about the situation in South Saharan Africa, some of the policy recommendations, and some of the steps that the World Bank has taken to address some of the issues there, including the food crisis, energy prices, and the rest. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So let me give you some basics. In our fiscal 2022, which ended on June 30th, um, w nearly half of the World Bank commitments were made to Africa. So that's a that's a change of that you know that's been happening over the years. A gradual shift in the in the uh, World Bank commitments uh, toward uh, fragile countries and in particular toward Africa. So we're doing uh, uh, it, it, so we've been expanding those programs as much as we can. Um, uh, to your capital flow point, let me add one thought. Um, it, it, during the, when interest rates were being kept low by the world, there was a reach for yield. Uh, and so uh, it, it, investors were putting money into some of the emerging markets. But when you look at the data, it wasn't going into gross fixed capital formation. It was going often into government bonds in those countries. So if you think about the flow, it went from savers in the advanced economies to governments in the, in the uh, uh, developing countries and didn't actually create infrastructure and the and the uh, new businesses that are needed to to uh, increase production so one of the things we're advocating now is just that uh, the uh, countries uh, in the developing world and in, in particular in Africa uh, look to use this uh, th this challenge this crisis uh, going on to improve their structural policies in order to, so that they can produce more in their countries. I think to get there, there would have to be more gross fixed capital formation. That means the actual physical investments and uh, educational investments within the countries in order to have future growth. One other point is the debt. Uh, crisis, and maybe we can talk about that with another question, but that that overhangs uh, Africa, and I said in my opening why. You know, the interest rates are up, the burden of the debt is higher, and the currencies are weakening for quite a few of the countries, and the world doesn't have a technique now to provide debt relief even when debt is unsustainable. We've seen multiple countries trying to asking the world community for debt relief and not finding a mechanism to do that. So that that's particularly relevant to Africa. Great. I don't know if everyone could hear it. So it was a question about Egypt and the World Bank did a loan uh, in the, I think it was in June, so it was in our fiscal uh, fourth quarter um, for Egypt. That the, As the food crisis hit in, uh, uh, well, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it drove up uh, food prices worldwide. And some country, there was a differential impact on various countries based on how dependent they were on food from the Black Sea. Uh, Egypt was hit hard. Several countries were, and the World Bank moved very fast in April and May uh, to provide assistance. So we did uh, a Lebanon loan. We did the Egypt loan that was mentioned here, which included two things. It was uh, to, to help purchase wheat because there, there was a shortage and bread is very important in Egypt. But then it also uh, uh, went to uh, uh, improvements in the food system within Egypt and the government put forward some reforms that, that could help within future resilience for food crisis. We also did uh, loans in Tunisia and also in East Africa. Uh, there, there was a $2.5 billion loan for food uh, security support in East Africa. This is part of our over of our, our overarching food security program uh, that I announced in Berlin, uh, it was 31 billion dollars that we will that we will commit to food security over the th over the 15 months starting in April, and so we're well along on that. I think we've done maybe nine billion of of that. So now the second part of the question was what could Egypt do, and e Egypt's facing 
the challenges that many developing countries are. So I'll emphasize to the extent that there are subsidies within the economy that they be targeted and that there be an exit strategy from the subsidies. To the extent that there can be efficiency gains for state-owned enterprises, uh, that those be those be done as quickly as possible. We, we stand ready to support uh, Egypt's uh, reform program uh, as as it as it emerges. As the reforms are put forward, we can consider loans in various areas. The World Bank is uh, is uh, is is. Uh, uh, moving very quickly to respond to the situation in the world, but it, 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 there, there are steps that are needed in order to get to, uh, loans that, are, that can be taken to our board. Or, and I should emphasize to people, you know, the World Bank puts out a huge amount of our commitments in the form of grants. So, uh, so loans and grants go to the board, uh, but they have to, they, they need to have a quality that can improve the situation going forward. Forward and we stand ready on that with Egypt. This involves the, the uh, fiscal uh, uh, policies, the state-owned enterprise policies, the efficiency of government spending, uh, the, the housing policies. We work in all areas uh, of that and look for opportunities to lend to uh, Egypt in this situation. Great. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll do it a little bit in reverse order. With regard to subsidies, uh, to the extent that governments can have them uh, be, be smaller, meaning not uh, if, if you're putting a, a cap on gasoline prices, don't make it a nominal cap in the local currency terms, but allow it to allow it to be reduced over time. So what the, the, the challenge in, for Nigeria is the, the subsidies are so large that they undermine the revenues coming to the government from the state-owned oil company. And uh, Nigeria is actually in a concerning situation because the, uh, the increase in the oil prices that occurred earlier this year uh, actually ended up hurting the finances of Nigeria because of that uh, large subsidy that's uh, provided. Um, th with regard to the, to, to the uh, 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 debt restructuring, so the World Bank works very closely with the IMF on debt situations. Nigeria has not asked for the common framework under the G20 process. That process uh, has been has been slow acting in, in in Chad and Ethiopia and Zambia. There's some signs of movement on Zambia, but it's uh, uh, still challenging. So Nigeria, nor and, and Ghana both did not ask for common framework treatment. Kristalina and I were talking uh, yesterday yesterday with uh, with the group about it part of the, the if if countries could have a situation where uh, the common framework uh, caused or allowed the country to uh, have a standstill on their debt uh, that would help the countries choose their their path forward on debt restructuring that would mean they would get a break on debt payments while they're working out a restructuring agreement with the with the world but Nigeria didn't go it hasn't gone that route um, some of the challenges on Nigeria and I've t talked you, you know been involved with with them for some time is the uh, the dual exchange rate or the multiple exchange rate that are used that makes it very hard to have capital flowing uh, in an efficient way within the country. Also, the trade policies tend to be protective on the import side and uh, uh, and uh, restrictive on the export side. Um, so we will be we would uh, work with the IMF on an assessment of the debt sustainability of Nigeria. But then it would also be up to Nigeria itself to interact with the various creditors, uh, which which uh, are, include bondholders, it includes official creditors uh, that, uh, that are engaged in, uh, in Nigeria. Thank you. So the answer is some of both. Uh, but clearly, the, 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 uh, the war itself and Russia's invasion are causing massive problems for the world. Uh, and so it's appropriate for the world to address that uh, and address that in a, in a unified fashion. And that's what I was uh, uh, sensing yesterday. And the World Bank's very involved in that. But your question is exactly right, that others are affected by that. Are they being left out. I, I think we, World Bank Group, are trying to uh, uh, be cognizant and be expanding in, 
in uh, all parts of the world, given the spillover of the crisis. Uh, for example, I, I went to Romania and Poland uh, early on in maybe in April because they were affected by the refugees coming out of Ukraine. But then also we I, I went to Morocco and Senegal, which were being hit hard uh, by the energy price uh, increase, the lack of natural gas shipments that affect the fertilizer flow within Africa. So we, the World Bank, have uh, programs uh, on food security. Uh, we, had a, we had an important event yesterday that included fertilizer. So one of the biggest African fertilizer producers was, was here, and we had a discussion of how can there be more uh, a more fertilizer appropriate to the crops uh, available in Africa, and there were specific uh, conversations. I met with the president of Togo yesterday, who that Togo has discovered phosphate, and that's a that's a key ingredient within uh, fertilizer. And there's an availability of natural gas from Nigeria or from Ghana that could be then used to make uh, fertilizer if that if the if that were a direction for the world. And so, um, my we are working throughout the developing world on the debt problems, also on the private sector engagement problems that are so important for each of the countries. So I guess I'll push back a little on the uh, – oh, well, and then – Yesterday, I met with the, the, the G7 had a or had a meeting with the Compact with Africa countries, which are a, a group that Germany has been very involved in. But it's uh, it, these are important countries within Africa, and what can be done to help there? There's there's 12 in in that group. I'll be meeting today with the or uh, sometime uh, what what today or tomorrow um, with the uh, African uh, uh, the the group of uh, African governors that are here, uh, and so there's there's a major focus. Uh, I, in fact, I would say, to be clear, David, there's there's one event that there was an event yesterday on Ukraine. But w if we look throughout the week, we've got seven active days of meetings of the World Bank, IMF, and th 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 those other meetings are constant and will be on other parts of the world. Thanks.